Hello and welcome to Prescient Software's introductory presentation on semantic technology called What is Semantic? The objective of this presentation is to clarify some of the terminology used and also to explain why semantic works and how it works um, in relation to computers and people. First off, we'll explain some of the uh, terminology. The semantic technology has been around for a few years now um, and it's being used in corporate and web-based environments but there's still quite a lot of obfuscation around it and really understanding what it is. It still, it still seems to be stuck in quite academic, academic circles. So in putting this presentation together we decided to, to show some of the bits and how it works. So, so semantic technology is effectively what this presentation is about. Um, it is the basic building blocks of how I believe a semantic web will work, um, but it is not specifically about the semantic web. Um, we, we're going to go into it in a bit of detail, so we'll, we'll, we'll skip on to the next sort of stage, which is the semantic web. Uh, and Web3, as it's sometimes called, which you may have heard of. And this, this is a massive undertaking. Um, it's going to take some time, I believe, to, to do, uh, like several years. Um, and it involves mapping the entire Internet into a structure which works semantically. Um, one of the reasons it's not going to be around for a little while is because it, it requires some form of semantic intelligence in order to be able to make it work. Semantic intelligence is um, a form of artificial intelligence. Um, the artificial intelligence would be required in order to automatically generate the information that would create the semantic web. It's not something that can be done manually, and nor really is there any point in doing it. And semantic intelligence doesn't currently have the complexity to be able to make uh, complicated decisions as to categorize all information um, available into a coherent structure that would um, generate the web. And after this presentation, I'm sure you'll agree with me that that's no mean task. So let's have a quick look at the differences between computers and people. Now, it can be summed up by saying computers calculate and people think. Um, the big difference between the two, of course, is uh, uh, the rules are defined in the programming for, for a computer, such as 2 plus 2 equals 4. Uh, it takes a very defined structure, puts it together in a form of, in, in a, form of a program in order to calculate something. And people think and they think horizontally, laterally, sometimes off at a tangent, which is very flexible, whereas, of course, just calculating according to a programmic uh, language or structure is pretty rigid. Now, semantic technology sits between the two. Um, it utilizes the calculative power of computers and puts that into a format where people will, will best aids how people think. So, how does that work? Um, first of all, we have to look at the building blocks of information and how we characterize that. First off, we have uh, labels or names. Um, now, we give names to items, um, and those names could be have several languages, effectively they're still the same item. They could be nicknames, proper names, you name it, you know. Um, and these are the labels by which we recognize things. These items will also have various characteristics that define it. Um, they can be properties, such as material, age, weight, etc. They can also be relationships, which are places, cultures, functions, they're the actual sort of uh, the bit surrounding an item, uh, a bit of information surrounding an item that allows us to place it within it um, and reference it with, with, within our understanding of our environment. Whereas properties, like, like I said before, age, 
price, size, material, etc. They're they're far more sort of attributes of the item, regardless of how the relationship may vary from culture to culture and place to place. So let's have a look at these in relation to an object so, so that we can see how it works more clearly. Here we have um, the Mona Lisa, um, a very famous painting. And of course we know it as the Mona Lisa, which is its label or name. And we also know that it was painted by Leonardo da Vinci. Now, looking at Leonardo da Vinci, you think, well, that's also a name and a label. And it is. It is. It, 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 obviously, it's the name of a person and the painter of the Mona Lisa. But because the object that we're looking at is the Mona Lisa, in this particular case, Leonardo is a relationship. We also know that it's an oil painting. Now, that's a property. Um, it's 500 years old. That's a property as well. It's Italian. That's more of a relationship. Uh, it's hung in the Louvre. Again, that's another relationship. And we also know that if it, we were to try and buy it, it would be a little bit pricey. And that is also a property. So here you can see how the facts or information surrounding an item can be labelled down into labels, relationships and properties. Now, how does this work with, with computers and, and calculating things? Simply, it works through the calculation of thought. So, what the program, what a semantic program will do is it utilizes the properties and relationships of items in order to connect things together and connect things together automatically. This then gives us navigation through the information itself. So via the relationships and properties, we can move through different types of information that share those similar similarities of properties and relationships, for instance. These links or relationships are automatically generated between things. Um, the computer will automatically generate all the links so the navigational pathways are not about links on pages. I'm going to just really hammer this home. It's not about links on pages, because the links themselves are actually dynamic queries which are automatically generated by the semantic uh, structure, um, because the computer looks after all of the information in relationship. All we have to do is, is decide what those relationships and properties are. Now, this is a big difference between how uh, programs have worked historically and how semantic works because the links on a static site will be static you'll have to go through and change all of those links if something changes or more information is added etc whereas a semantic structure will take care of all of that automatically and actually leaves the complex stuff which is putting together how the information interrelates as, as being um, the human aspect so now we understand how the blocks fit together, let's put it together and get the bigger picture. Here we have an example of, again, the Mona Lisa, which is, of course, uh, uh, as we described, painted by Leonardo da Vinci. Now, we take Leonardo da Vinci and we go, maybe we go and have a look at the Renaissance, which is obviously the period in which he painted um, the picture. And from there we go, which is, a, a, again, which is, which is a, a relationship. And we go from there to Michelangelo, who was another Renaissance painter. Um, and from Michelangelo, we start to have a look at some of his sculptures. And, and that's great. And then we decide, well, well, what's going on in Japan at the same time? And so we've, we've flipped to, to, to Japan now. We go, oh, I wonder what's happening in modern Japan in, in sculpture. So... Here we've gone through five steps and we've gone from the Mona Lisa to modern Japan, effectively, um, modern Japanese sculpture. So what we've done is we've taken relationships between bits of information and ended up in a completely different place through, in this, in this particular uh, instance, through different types of property and relationships and uh, based through time and place. Another example would be we take 
we again starting from the same place we go from um, the Mona Lisa to have a look at some of Leonardo's drawings and we have a look at the one on the helicopter and we think oh, this is interesting let's have another look at some more designs of helicopters and we go from there to, to looking at manufacturers of helicopters and from there we look at the cost of possibly buying a helicopter and quickly move on ad infinitum. So here we've got two very disparate journeys, very, very different, but coming from the same starting point. And depending on what the universe of information is, obviously this, this will be, you know, the semantic relationships will be defined as such. And here we get a very clear picture on how we can navigate through information in a very human way. Just quickly before we go, I'm going to show you some of the benefits associated with um, with semantic. Um, obviously, with you can see it's quite a clever idea, and um, it brings benefits across the board. It really does. It saves time. It saves money. It makes easier usability. Uh, it's a win-win situation. It really is, and of course, it's future-proof. But First off, it's less prescriptive and more intuitive because you're not relying on a designer's interpretation of how um, you should navigate through information. You are using the inherent structure of information as we understand it, so it's far more intuitive and far less prescriptive. It becomes very easy to navigate large data sets, especially if you know what you're looking for, or even if you don't know what you're looking for, because instead of navigating lists, you're navigating bits of information that are pertinent to whatever it is that you're looking at. You can navigate without having to leave the information and restart your search criteria and come back in and if you hit a dead end, go back out and start all over again. Because all the information has the interlinkage, you, you can just move, move on to the next thing. Hmm. Much, much easier. People can work with the information how they think while they think. So they haven't got to tr try and work it all out in advance or anything like that. They can literally just work on the hoof. So it adds a level of stickiness that wasn't there before. They're also exposed to information they not have otherwise may not have otherwise thought of, just purely by the fact that the information is related. So you, for instance, might be researching something or looking into something, and other information that you might not have thought about as being uh, related at all. It could well and easily be found. Um, adding yet another level of stickiness and, inter and interest. Saves a lot of time for users, as, as we've looked at for above, but also a lot of time for administrators because you're not relying on links static in pages that have to be maintained and checked or anything like that within the structure of, it, of the database itself and the, inf the, the environment. Is it's all taken care of by, by the semantic database, so you don't even have to think about it. In, in, and therefore, purely by definition, less broken links and better data integrity. The information is more valid because obviously you're looking at information that has properties that, are, that, that have been put together uh, in relation to the information. So uh, you're not looking at something that's not valid. And finally, new information can be added without affecting the old information. Um, so you can come along and expand your data set without requiring any technical involvement or anything like that at all. And therefore you can have uh, normal users uh, set up as administrators perhaps who can just maintain control of the information in the environment. So as you can see, it saves time, it saves money, and it adds usability and stickiness to it, so it's, a, it's an all-round win-win. Thank you very much for uh, listening to this or watching this presentation. If you have enjoyed it, please uh, go to our website and have a look at some of the uh, ideas that we've put together with our semantic products. Um, of course, it's not limited by any stretch of the imagination to what we've done, but um, we have just a few examples of what can be what, what we've done so far. Thank you very much and goodbye.